well if I have a stronghold in New York, LA, and Atlanta. Great. Or New York and London and um, Canada. Great. Get, gain a foothold and to work in multiple markets. And really talk about um, what that means. Hi there. Jody Bentley here, actor, brand strategist, and career coach. And today I want to talk about working in multiple markets. Now this comes up a lot with clients um, because we wanna maximize our auditions and our bookings, right? So the, um, the thought of, well, if I have a stronghold in New York, LA and Atlanta, great, or New York and London and um, Canada, great. So there's this drive I'm feeling uh, from a lot of my clients to Get, gain a foothold and to work in multiple markets. So I just want to talk into that in this video and really talk about um, what that means and how to go about doing it. And this came up recently with a client talking about wanting to move to another market in the US, that they already have an agent in the New York market and they wanted to expand. So so how, how do we do that? So first and foremost, I think it's very um, easy to think well, if I have an agent in New York and LA and Atlanta, then everything is going to be working even better, right? Then I'll have more auditions and I'll have more opportunities. And yes, to some degree, that is true. But what I really invite you to do, if this is something you're like, oh man, I, everyone else has an agent in Atlanta. I need one down there. I need a Southeast agent. Um, if this is how you've been feeling, I really invite you to get a stronghold in the market that you're in. So what do I mean by that? If you are in Los Angeles, uh, have reps in LA, make that the focus to get your agent or your manager in Los Angeles and start building relationships with casting directors in your main market. Cause what I find happen is clients go, great. I got my LA agent. Now let me jump right away and get my Southeast agent. Let me jump right away and get my New York agent. Or, you know, or if you're in London, let me jump right away here and then go here and then go here. And they want everything all at once. So I invite you just to breathe um, and be a little patient and go, okay, I'm in LA. Let me get my agent here and let me build relationships here. And let me do that for a little bit, three months, six months, whatever it may be, just to start to feel like you can get some traction in one market. Because if that's the case and you're, the ball is starting to roll in one market, then you can look at that agent and go, Hey agent, Hey, Los Angeles agent. I also would love uh, to work more in the Southeast market. So I'm wondering, do you have, um, any of your clients have Southeast agents that you love working with that you can introduce me to? So do you see, do you see what we're doing here? You're going to build and strengthen the relationship in the market that you have to then expand to another market. So as opposed to going choo, all at once, right? And trying to cover all markets and all your bases, let's focus and build for three months, six months, nine months, whatever it may be right? To get casting to know you, to get that agent to trust in you, to then say, hey, I want some support moving to this other market. Because they might say, oh yeah, we work all the time with, with People Store down, down in Atlanta. We have five clients with them. Let me send them an email. And then you can have someone supporting you on that journey. Or then at least you'll have some clout in the LA market to then use that in your pitch when you're pitching uh, to, to Atlanta agents. So does that kind of make sense? So as opposed to, again, wanting to land everything at once. Let's just have a little patience, build in your major market, then we can start to expand slowly to the other markets. And why are we doing this? Well, when you start to expand to, to different markets, but you're not, uh, you're not living there, you're a local hire, right? I am, uh, my manager writes on my resumes, I'm a provable local hire in New York. I have so many friends in New York. I can crash on anyone's couch. I could use someone's address if I needed to. So I know that I can be a local hire in New York. So do you have that situation in Chicago, New York, Atlanta, wherever it may be, right? Where could you consider yourself a local hire? Now, what that term local hire means, it typically just comes from contracts, right? So if there's a film and they're casting some roles and they say this role has to be a local hire, it's simply because of a budgetary constraint. They can't afford to fly someone in for that position. They have to hire someone locally for that role because that's what works in the budget of that project. So when they're saying local hire, you get to be prepared to fly yourself in for the booking, 
maybe fly yourself in for a callback, depending on, um, you know, how big that role might be, um, and put yourself up because that is not in the budget for that project. That's why it said local hire. That's why you can call yourself a local hire in the market. So yes, it will increase your opportunities, but you also get to look at it from a financial perspective of, are you willing to be a local hire in that market when it means you will need to fly, fly yourself in for bookings and put yourself up as well. Now, if you have people in that market like I do in New York, then that becomes a no-brainer, right? You can do that. And if it's a really great, you know, guest star role, recurring guest star, supporting role in a film, lead role in a film, of course it makes sense, right? The return on your investment of paying for that flight um, and getting compensated for the role, you're, you're going to win at the end. Do you know what I mean? Or maybe you won't win financially, but working with that director is a huge goal for you. So you gotta weigh in all those possibilities. But I just want you to understand that that's what a local hire means. So if you book it and then you start negotiating travel, and look, sometimes agents and managers can do that and they can work their magic because they really want you for the part, right? And they can frame it and spin it how they want. I've had that happen with clients. But I just want you to approach uh, local hire status with the understanding that you're gonna have to pay for that stuff. So maybe uh, if you're a local hire in Atlanta, but you live in Los Angeles, maybe you don't want to be considered for co-star roles because you don't want to pay yourself to fly out there for co-star roles because you're barely going to break even. Or maybe it means a lot to you to get that co-star role on your resume to then book more in Los Angeles. So again, you got to weigh out those situations. There's no black and white, right? When we're coming, when we're looking at local hire, but I just want you to understand what it really means. And the other thing that people don't think about, if you have an agent in LA, New York, Atlanta, let's stick with that example. Um, you're gonna be paying 10% to LA, New York, Atlanta. And people go, well, why am I paying my other agents something if I book something in LA? All right, you say your LA agent got you a film and now you're on set for three weeks. Well, your New York and your Atlanta agent can't submit you, you're booked out. And they're also part of your team. I believe in compensating my team. So I have um, multiple clients because I don't have an agent um, in the in the Southeast market. Um, so I don't, I don't, this isn't applicable to me, but what I have a lot of clients do and, and what I hear is really prevalent in the industry, when, especially when you have three agents, right? You have the trifecta going. You get to negotiate the percentage. So it's not 10% for everyone. Maybe the, the agent that got you the job gets 10% and the other two get five, or maybe everyone gets eight on all projects, right? So there's, there is a place for you to negotiate percentage um, and have that open conversation. And I think agents have been used to that now, especially for their clients that are working in multiple markets, but just know that you will be paying your team because they're your team but you get to negotiate whatever percentage that is. So, you know, it's not just as easy as like, I'm gonna land an agent in every market. I really just want you to think through your strategy, how it applies to you and your goals and understand the financial implications um, that can happen around that, right? Again, with the flying yourself there and the percentage split and all of that. So let me know what you think in the comments below. I am sure uh, this has spurred some questions as well. So post your questions. I promise I'll get back to you. Um, this is an important conversation to have, you know, especially since the world has opened up to self tapes and all of this, it's easier to audition for things, but we got to think of how it plays out on the back end as well. All right, I will see you soon. Thanks for watching. Bye.